Hi, welcome to this Lunch and Learn. Today we're going to be talking about remote assistance using the HoloLens 2. I'm Scott Lehman, the Mixed Reality Lead for Software Stereo in Norway, and I'm here with my colleague Yelmer. Hi, my name is Yelmer Verhoog, and I work as a consultant with Mixed Reality in Software Stereo. So for a lot of our, our customers, they have this common problem of travel. Uh, they might have a factory or other facility where they need to send people, send service technicians, uh, and so they're spending money, they're spending time for those technicians to get out there, uh, and so a lot of the technicians are spending more time traveling than, than actually getting work done. Uh, and this is uh, particularly relevant during these COVID-19 times where there might be uh, added risk uh, for those technicians traveling around. Uh, they might be in a high-risk group or there might be travel restrictions where they're they're not able to to travel at all. Uh, and so we're looking at uh, or we're delivering that uh, solutions for that problem where uh, instead of having sending those technicians out, those uh, experts, those senior technicians, you can have uh, other people on the facilities uh, doing the work, using their hands, using tools, but getting expert hurts help from those uh, from those experts remotely by sharing what they're seeing, by allowing those experts to provide guidance, to annotate the world, uh, to provide instructions uh, to the people working in the field. Uh, and this isn't just relevant to uh, technical work. This can also be useful for, for sales. If you're showing uh, a product or some food products or a location or some industrial equipment, the remote expert could actually be a customer who's, uh, who's viewing that, uh, that product or that area remotely. Uh, but for remote experts in particular for for these uh, highly trained experts it allows them to scale uh, so by not having to physically travel they can avoid the risk of infection but they can also spread their expertise uh, over a greater uh, a greater number of jobs uh, in the same time and how we tackle this is using a device called the HoloLens 2 the HoloLens 2 is a, a wearable computer from Microsoft it runs a version of Windows 10 was released earlier this year, uh, as successor to the original HoloLens. Uh, and this is a device that we uh, at Suppressteria offer as part of our products as well. Uh, so it's a, a wearable computer and it contains all your things you'd expect from a, a normal computer. So it has onboard processing, onboard storage. Uh, so it doesn't connect to uh, a phone or a laptop. It's, it's all like a, a wearable device. Uh, and it doesn't have a traditional screen. It has a transparent visor, so when you wear it, you're seeing the real world, you're able to walk around, talk to people, uh, work with your hands, work with tools, but you're seeing digital objects, holograms uh, embedded and anchored into the real world. Uh, and so to allow that experience of adding digital objects to the world, it has a lot of sensors. Uh, it's got eight cameras, uh, four cameras that are looking around at the environment, tracking the environment as you move around. Uh, it's got a depth camera, which is tracking your hand movement, so you can use your hands to interact with the device. And it's got a color camera that you can use to stream your perspective uh, to other people. And we're going to be talking particularly about using that, that camera today. Uh, and it also has two eye tracking cameras that uh, allow the device to uh, track what you're looking at so you can interact with uh, digital objects just by looking at them. And it can also use those cameras to sign you into, uh, sign you into the device with the, by detecting your irises. Uh, and it has a, a five microphone array, so you can use voice commands to control the device, even in very loud environments. It's going to pick up your voice instead of other people's voice or other noises in the environment. So for you, those of you who haven't tried uh, the HoloLens 2, this is a little bit what the experience looks like. You're seeing these holograms that are anchored in the real world. You're able to move around and you're able to reach out with your hand and touch them and interact with them as if they were physical objects. So if you see a holographic button, you're able to press it. If you see a holographic slider, you're able to reach out and pinch it and move it about. So we're going to look at two custom stories about how we're using the HoloLens 2 to allow uh, remote inspection. Uh, and the first is Aka Bloor. Uh, if you could talk about that, Yelder. Yes, uh, next slide. So Aka Bloor is a company that provides fish health uh, services to fish farms. Uh, their veterinarians carry out inspections and surveys and they also help in emergency situations. For example, when lots of fish uh, suddenly turn ill. Next slide. Uh, so fish farms are often located in very remote locations. And because of this, um, Awkward Blue employees uh, travel a lot, which obviously costs a lot of time and a lot of money. 
In fact, most of their time is used on traveling. So Ockerblo contacted Soprasteria to discuss whether the HoloLens could help reduce the amount of traveling and costs of traveling and help increase the response time in uh, emergency situations. And with the start of the travel restrictions that came with the COVID-19 measures, the need for remote assistance became even stronger. So Ockerblo was running a Microsoft Dynamics environment for before, from before. Uh, so a natural tool to test out was Microsoft Remote Assist uh, for the HoloLens. Um, so this is a mixed reality collaboration and communi communication tool. Um, it's specifically made for field workers that need to work uh, hands-free. So a typical scenario here is that you have a field worker that wears a HoloLens on one hand, and he or, he or she can then uh, ring a remote expert that can then join from a PC or using Teams. So they can have a conversation and there's a number of tools available as well. Uh, we'll share this later in the live demo. So Remote Assist integrates with Dynamics and Teams, and it's very easy to set up. Uh, users can use their own Microsoft account. They can even log in on the HoloLens using the eye recognition. Next slide. Um, so for Ocreblo, we set up a pilot project to test out how the HoloLens could help. The goal was to see to what extent the HoloLens could replace a physical visit to the fish farms. So in this pilot project, it consists of two phases. Uh, first, we had a service design phase, um, and here we mapped uh, and analyzed the activities that veterinarians uh, carry out in their you know, daily day-to-day -day routines. Um, we see it's super important for a project like this to first analyze the, how, how the field workers work uh, because they have already established uh, routines from before uh, and they often already have enough to do. So the technology should really help them rather than to be an extra burden. Uh, so we saw that there was a good case for the HoloLens and we uh, went on to the second phase, which was testing HoloLens out in the field. So um, for one period, we tested it uh, on the facility you see on the left. This is called Ocean Farm 1. It's a new type of offshore salmon facility um, by, uh, owned by Salmar. And on the right hand, you see a fish hatchery, which is owned by Vicon Setefisk. In both cases, there was one person at the facility that needed uh, instructions or help. And on Teams, there, was, uh, there were the remote experts that provided uh, help or instructions. So this proof of concept was uh, all in all carried out entirely remotely. Uh, we saw that the HoloLens and remote assist were uh, really easy to learn. Uh, People had no experience with HoloLens from before, but it's a very natural way of, of using a, a device like this. Uh, the integration with uh, Teams worked out great. Uh, could start it almost right away. Um, and most tasks that the veterinarians carry out at fish farms could actually be carried out by a novice user with help of the remote expert. Also important, the HoloLens uh, didn't obstruct the user from carrying out his normal tasks. So it fit in very naturally, actually. Uh, so now we're planning uh, the next phase for this project. Yeah. Great. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about uh, another project that uses the, the HoloLens 2 and uh, collaboration using the, the HoloLens 2 for, for medical use. Uh, so the Holocare project is a collaboration between uh, a public uh, healthcare system, Norwegian hospitals, uh, and also uh, the private sector in the form of Soprasteria. Uh, so it's uh, about Soprasteria and these hospitals collaborating to, to find the, the best use of mixed reality uh, technology for, for healthcare cases. Uh, and this recently uh, became its own individual company owned by Soprasteria and also University Hospital in, in January of this year. Uh, and so one of these projects, uh, one of the projects that are uh, has been done by Holocare is for infant heart surgery planning. Uh, so this is where multiple surgeons uh, in the same location can look at a, a hologram that's been constructed from the, the CT imagery that's been taken of a patient and they're able to discuss that, uh, discuss the problem together to see the same hologram in the same place uh, at the same time and be able to manipulate it with their hands and uh, and decide on what the problem is and what's a, a common approach. And another application is focused on orthopedic surgery, where orthopedic surgeons can see an x-ray view 
uh, inside a, a patient to see their skeletal structure as they're moving. So if the patient experiences any pain uh, or any limitation of movement, they can see the cause of that uh, of that problem. Uh, and so these applications and other are all focused on on giving surgeons better information, a better uh, and quicker understanding of the issues and uh, a common shared objective view of uh, the problem and the approach they need to take. Uh, traditionally, when surgeons are looking at 2D imagery, they're they're making their own uh, 3D image in their head. Uh, and so being able to have a shared image, uh, a shared 3D image allows them to have a uh, communicate faster and better. Um, but during the COVID-19 times, there's some specific needs that have uh, sprung up for uh, the surgeons and, and other clinicians. Uh, they want to limit traffic in and out of patient rooms uh, and other areas. They want to protect critically important health personnel, including those that are in a high risk group. Uh, they want to avoid cross contamination between hospitals, but also have better collaboration uh, between different hospitals. Uh, and they want to limit the risk of contamination of equipment and uh, and make better use of the key resources that they have. Uh, and so one approach that we've taken for Holocare is to use that remote uh, assist uh, use case, like in Akablor, to have junior interventionists on the ground in the hospitals uh, wearing a whole lens and be able to get uh, advice remotely from, from experts that are uh, off-site or even in quarantine. So even if a uh, a senior interventionist is uh, in quarantine uh, because there has been a chance they've been exposed to the virus. They can still work and they can still contribute um, to to the treatment of patients. And then you can have other observers also following along uh, offsite in order to uh, to to give advice or to to take training uh, of what's going on. And another use case is for taking those surgery planning sessions, those uh, multi-display uh, team meetings, uh, and allowing them to be done remotely so that there's less risk of uh, exposure uh, and spread of the virus. So if you have uh, these doctors working off-site uh, using whole lenses remotely, they're able to collaborate together, uh, turn that 2D CT imagery into a 3D hologram, uh, and have a conversation that way, seeing each other as, as 3D avatars. And I'll show you what what that experience looks like. So you have multiple surgeons uh, wearing the whole lens two units and, and seeing each other's avatars in different countries or different hospitals within the same country. So they're able to, to see the holograms together, uh, manipulate the, the holograms or move it about, resize it, cut into the different layers. Uh, of this case, it's a, a liver. Uh, a, a liver surgery planning session where they're discussing a, a tumor that needs to be removed uh, and they're able to see the the 2d imagery as well the uh, the ct imagery uh, and they're able to mark points of the liver to have a discussion um, uh, like they're able to to share their voice and to share their hand movements in order to get a common understanding of what the problem is and what the approach should be for the surgery uh, so this allows them to collaborate without being in the same space, without contaminating equipment. Uh, and this is also true for, for heart surgeries as well, where we can cut into the 3D hologram of the heart to see the internals and have a conversation and a, a shared picture of what the problem is and what the approach needs to be. Uh, and so these, uh, this work was recently the winner of the uh, remote working and education uh, category of the EU versus virus. Uh, uh, hackathon that was held uh, at the end of last month. Uh, so now we're going to have a, a live demo uh, of remote assist. Uh, so I'm going to call up my my colleague Yelner. Yeah, hi. Yelmer here. Hi Yelmer, how's it going? Copy. Yeah, it's uh, going well. I'm uh, at this technical facility. Um, Looking at this system, but there seems uh, seems to be something wrong with it. Okay, uh, yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, I see. It's it's showing zero at the moment. That's uh, that can't be yeah, right. right. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think we have to do something about this. Do you have any yeah. idea what the problem could be? Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think really you need to uh, probably replace that gauge. But uh, before you do that, you really need to uh, you really need to shut off the valve. Uh, so okay. if you could uh, turn the valve this way 
Uh, okay, to shut off the pressure. Thanks. Right. Okay, great. And now you can uh, you can remove the the valve. Um, but let me send some uh, let me send some instructions on how to do that. So sh you should uh, you should be getting an image soon of of how to remove it. Right, I see it going. Uh -huh. I see. Thanks. I'll use like this. Uh, I think this one is broken. <laughs> Let me get a new one. Ah, here's a fresh new one. All right. Okay, and don't uh, don't forget to put the the pressure back on. Okay, thanks. Yeah, with some fantasy, I see that it's uh, working now. Perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a, a PDF of uh, uh, of uh, maintenance instructions for that valve, uh, or, or sorry, for that gauge, so that you can um, get a little bit more input on on how to maintain it in the future and uh, any other possible maintenance steps you might have to make. Perfect. All right, let me save this in my OneDrive so I can access it later. There. Cool. Well, thanks for the help. Okay, by the cool. way, by the way, I saw something here. You tell oh. me more about this. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, that's uh, that is some. Uh, uh, a shipment of Holland's twos that we recently got in. So that's that's equipment that we can uh, supply to our customers as, as part of projects. So if they want to uh, try out this experience for them themselves, then we have uh, more than enough uh, equipment to get them started. Oh, really nice. All right. I'll see you back in the presentation. All right. Bye. See you there. Bye. Okay, great. So with Remote Assist, you're able to uh, share your perspective of the people out in the field uh, in location with a remote expert such as myself or multiple uh, remote experts. Uh, you're able to annotate both ways. So I was able to draw uh, in Yelma's world and he was able to draw in his world and, and show me uh, things he wanted to highlight as well. Uh, and those annotations are in 3D because the whole lens too understands the space that it's in. Uh, it's able to draw uh, drawings or place arrows or other content in the world. It's not just floating in uh, in space. It's actually on the objects that you're indicating. Uh, and the whole end user can also take photos and send them to remote experts uh, to verify work, for example. Uh, and the remote experts, the people working on their, their laptops or on their phones, can share their screen uh, and send PDFs or, or images to the people out in the field to help them get things done. From the expert side, you're just using Microsoft Teams, so you're using the uh, software that you're uh, probably already using, and you can also integrate it with Dynamics 365 Field Service. So we're going to talk a little bit about our uh, our process for getting started with remote assistance. I think I'll I'll let Yelma take that. Sure. Uh, you go to the next slide. So HoloLens is uh, it's never a go in itself. Uh, so we always use our lean uh, next method in which we uh, take use cases as uh, we approach them as hypotheses that need to be verified uh, first. This is because the HoloLens is a new medium and sometimes it simply doesn't fit your needs or there may be a, diff a different technical solution to solve a certain need. So with this lean next method, uh, this is a user design, uh, user centered uh, design method. Um, we work with uh, different iterations and this reduces uh, risk and cost. So per iteration, you have uh, basically one hypothesis that we that we test. Um, so then we use a start with an insights phase, a development phase and a testing and learning phase. So one iteration usually takes anywhere between two and four weeks. Next slide. Um, so we recommend this type of project plan in which uh, every phase is treated uh, as a separate project. First, we have a proof of concept phase. Here we test out if and how the HoloLens can uh, provide value and solve problems. Uh, we have an insights phase there with, uh, with the end user and uh, do user testing as well. Uh, so this typically takes uh, two to three weeks and 
if it's a success, we go to the next phase, phase, which is the pilot phase. So here we test out the HoloLens on a larger scale in the organization over a longer period of time. This is to see if the HoloLens can be used regularly by a larger group of users. Uh, this phase usually takes uh, 10 weeks. If this is successful, we go to the implementation phase in which we deploy the HoloLens on a large scale in an organization and integrate it tightly. Uh, this is also where we, we train employees in using the HoloLens and provide technical support. But this is a large scale project, which is uh, completely custom. Okay, great. So now I think we'll jump to questions from the audience. If you've got any questions, please uh, add them through the, the, the chat window. Um, okay, so it looks like we've already got some some good questions. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll some of them have already been uh, answered, but I'll uh, I, I might. Uh, Talk to the talk to them as well. Someone asked, "Does the kit comply with the use within harsh environments like gas, etc?" Um, so, the the whole lens two comes in uh, different versions. There's the standard uh, whole lens unit that we use today. There's also a version that's uh, embedded in a hard hat uh, that can be used on hard hat sites. Um, it can't uh, be used on environments where there's uh, an explosion risk uh, from gas. So it's not um, uh, it doesn't have the ATEX uh, certification. Uh, there are other other products out there that uh, that do uh, meet that certification, so we can uh, we can look at those as well and and, and give good advice and projects around those uh, as required. Um, okay. Um, Instead of a, there was a question, instead of PDF file, could the information be in an application? Uh, that is a very good question. So there is, uh, you're able to, uh, with using the remote uh, assist application, you're able to share your screen. So uh, you can, um, you can share your screen and show another application to the HoloLens user. Um, if you wanted to, integrate uh, other data into uh, an applica into a, an experience that you want to show that you couldn't show via sharing your screen or sending an image or a PDF um, that would probably require uh, custom development. Um, so we do we do um, both sides sorts of projects at um, Subrastero. We do projects that involve the remote assist application, which is a application to Microsoft that integrates with Teams. And then, like we showed with the, the Holocare uh, surgery collaboration case, we also do uh, custom projects around collaboration as well. Does the HoloLens have a 4G connection? No, it doesn't. The, the HoloLens uh, 2 has got a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection, but it also supports 5G dongles via a USB-C port at the back. Could you say anything about implementation and running cost? Um, so because it's because uh, remote assist integrates uh, with Microsoft Teams and Dynamics 365 field services, the initial um, well, the initial implementation cost is is quite low. Um, the main uh, costs are, are are around working out how it can be integrated with the existing work. Um, as Yelmer talked about as, as part of our process. So the, the running costs are quite low. Um, so to use remote assist, you need Microsoft Teams and you need uh, Azure Active Directory accounts for the users. Uh, and there's also a, a separate uh, remote assist uh, subscription cost uh, for the, the HoloLens users. Uh, that's around, I think, uh, 70 US dollars per user per month.
<laughs> okay, someone asked, Apple Glass is coming. Can this compete at some point with HoloLens? Um, I would say, uh, sp uh, speaking broadly, there's other uh, wearable uh, devices out there, uh, wearable computing devices out there. Currently, there's a, there's a Google Glass, there's other industrial focused uh, equipment, there's the Magic Leap. Um, but uh, from our perspective, the HoloLens 2 is often uh, the best choice because it's it's focused on uh, industrial use. It's focused on work on on being uh, productive, and it has all the integrations with uh, with the Microsoft ecosystem. Uh, and a lot of the other companies out there are are smaller companies that have a little bit more platform risk. Um, you know, they might go bankrupt in in six months, which is a risk you don't uh, don't have with Microsoft. So it's a it's a, a reliable and easily integrated uh, platform, uh, computing platform, the HoloLens 2. With Apple in particular, uh, I'm assuming their focus is going to be on consumers. Um, and there's definitely space for using consumer uh, equipment for uh, for industrial use, but there, there, there can be limitations and compromises there. So I think with whatever Apple ends up releasing, uh, it's going to be focused on a different use case of something that's light, something that's fashionable, uh, and something that works well with their existing products. So it's not necessarily going to give the same experience uh, as the HoloLens 2, which is really a, a wearable computer running running Windows. So it allows a, a huge range of different uh, use cases, while uh, what Apple releases might be more, more limited and consumer focused. Uh, do you think, have I missed any questions, Yelmer? Um, there's a question that just came in about how a GDPR is considered. Um, I think this is all uh, based, it's all based on Microsoft technology and uh, this complies with the GDPR. Yeah, so a, a, a lot of the, um, you know, the, the HoloLens 2 has got a lot of sensors, but that uh, that it's all processed uh, on the device. So all the the cameras that you're uh, and the microphones that you're using, they're not uh, that information isn't sent off uh, to Microsoft without your your permission or to to an, another source without your permission. So it's doing all the processing of understanding the world uh, on the device. Um, and of course, with use cases like. Uh, uh, using the the video camera uh, uh, on the device on the HoloLens 2 to to share your perspective with another user, you're you're sharing that information uh, willingly over over Teams, and there's a there's a light that comes on when you're using that camera, so it's quite quite clear um, when it's being used. So I don't think there's strong privacy risks uh, around that use case. Mm -hmm. So there's another question about how heavy is it? Any issues with people wearing it for a long time? Um, so in terms of wearing it for a, a long time, it's uh, uh, it has a, a battery life of approximately three hours. Um, it's quite a comfortable device. Microsoft made a lot of improvements uh, since the first version. The first version was quite front heavy because everything was at the front of the device, but now it's balanced between the front unit and the back unit, so it's very balanced on your head, and um, we didn't really show it. But the visor that uh, you're wearing can also be tilted up, um, so you can tilt it up if you want to uh, t take it off without taking it off. Um, so I would say it's it's comfortable for uh, two or three hours at a time uh, of active use. So it, it the battery won't. Uh, um, deplete when it's at sleep as well uh, as well. So it's it's not necessarily going to run out of battery after three hours. It's going to run out of battery after three hours of active use. Uh, 
OK, I don't think we've missed any questions, but if we have, we'll we'll send them out with uh, with answers uh, separately. OK, great. Uh, thank you for uh, for tuning in for this uh, lunch and learn session. Uh, if there's any qu uh, further questions, please uh, add them to the chat or or uh, or I send through a, an email to myself or, or Yelmer. And if you're interested in uh, having further discussions, uh, discussions around uh, a project or other use cases for the whole lens too, please let us know.